Okay, so we have done kinematics analysis and vectors. We're now going to start talking about force analysis. So let's do a quick review. Physics, now you get a sense now of physics. One definition might be that it's a mathematical modeling, analysis, experimentation of physical process, right? Draw pictures, equations that model the process. There are four main ways to analyze physical process. Kinematics analysis, describe how, describe how the motion is, how it's moving. Force analysis, describe why, that's what we're going to do right now. When we learn that, we're going to put those together and rewrite that, and we'll see the justification for do that, why it's a nice way to do it. Rewrite that as momentum analysis, and then energy analysis. Very powerful tool. Understanding those connections makes you very clear and uh, you use it in, in lots of different ways. So let's move on to our target now. Force analysis will be our building block going on. What are we doing for force analysis? So for force analysis, what we're going to do with three concepts, definitions, being very careful because these concepts are often defined incorrectly. Even in books, people misspeak. We kind of know what we mean, maybe but it's a little bit sloppy. Let's get it right. There's acceleration, which we've done. Good news. There's force, and there's mass. So we'll take each of those one by one. There's three laws. So then we're going to study and get an intuition for the three laws. Those are called Newton's laws. I write them N1, Newton's first law of motion, Newton's second law of motion, Newton's third law of motion. Okay. Then there's a clear method. So we'll look at a very clear steps, just like our problem solving. And that will be a great guide because it will draw us into the details once again, into the physical details. Wait a minute, what's going on with this and what's going on with that? So we'll do that. Um, that clear method will sometimes involve combining or pulling in kinematics, combining force and kinematics in one problem. So it gets to be fun, just as long as you're clear uh, what tools you're using. And then we'll explore different types of forces. What makes them strong or weak? and what gives the direction, what factors are involved there. So that's what we're going to do today, or in this video, we're going to look at the three concepts and define them clearly. Write them down, train yourself to think really carefully about them because trust me, they're kind of slippery and people get them wrong a lot. So let's go over here. Let's define acceleration again real quickly. A uh, little pet peeve. Acceleration describes the rate at which velocity changes. It is not the cause of the change of motion. Force will be a cause, net force, we'll see. But acceleration just says, this is how I'm you know, increasing my speed at this rate, or decreasing my speed, or turning. Um, and that could be for a lot of reasons. You could, all, you could have the same acceleration, but for many different reasons. You can, uh, change speed, increase speed, remember that A is parallel to the velocity. For decreasing speed, your A is uh, opposite the velocity, which might be in the positive direction, if the velocity is so work on that. Uh, you could turn, if you're only turning and not changing speed, you have acceleration perpendicular to the velocity and into the circle. Uh, in general, the acceleration, you can change speed and you can turn at the same time. Right? One quick tip that's uh, relevant to our force analysis is choosing coordinates is going to be key. Our best choice, remember this, is usually to have the acceleration in one direction. Choose one axis, whichever the way the acceleration is. And then there's no acceleration in the perpendicular direction. You'll see why that makes our equations easier. Okay. So for example, on an inclined plane, if something's rolling up and down, the acceleration's down. So I'll choose down that ramp to be my positive x direction. So Ax is A. While it is going vertically down, it is not traveling perpendicular to the ramp, and so the acceleration in the y direction is zero. And put these next to your coordinates, it's gonna save you a ton of time, okay? Trust me on that. Or, for example, projectile motion. Now, if it goes up, I often call up positive. If it only goes down, I call it down positive. But if I call up positive, Ay is negative G. 
where g is not gravity, it's the free fall acceleration or free flight acceleration. And then the horizontal direction, ax is zero. Working from that, you can build your equations, then do the algebra. Okay, so we know acceleration. I can accelerate by pushing something. It has an acceleration that way because I'm speeding it up. I let go and then the acceleration is down, down, down. I know something can move in a circle. And then there's a part of it that's slowing down, so it's an acceleration opposite the motion. And it's turning, there's a part of the acceleration perpendicular. We'll get into that. And now what we're going to do look, is look at the cause of acceleration. What causes things to increase or decrease speed? What causes things to turn? Or do both? That's what Newton's law has given us. So again, we need to be very careful here. Um, the a force is strictly, and you're gonna you're gonna trip up trip up on this. So uh, just keep this definition in mind. Remind yourself, and when your intuition is being uh, you know, a little uncomfortable, you'll redefine it. Trust this definition. It has to be an interac interaction, a push or pull between two objects. If you can't blame it on something, there's no force. You might think there's a force, but if you can't blame it on another object, if there's not another object involved in the push or pull, then there isn't a force, and you just think there is, and that's going to happen. So a good way to avoid this is to say that force, a vector, is of some type. Okay. So that type might be friction, it might be normal, it might be gravity, it might be tension, any type of force. It's got to be from some object, a real object. So fill in the blank. Um, I call that object the source, or S, capital S I use sometimes, the source. Yeah, some people call it the agent of the force. That's a good word, too. Um, there is some object responsible for the pusher pull. Something's doing the pusher pulling. And it is on another object. And I have to be clear, what object do I care about? I call that object the receiver of the force, R. Um, and you'll see when I write general, general equations and definitions, I'll use S and R. And then when we make them specific, you'll put in particular source, a particular object here, and a particular object here. And that'll be a, a good framework to think. So it's an interaction, a force. Now, so you've got a force, which is some type of force, from some object on another object. It has some strength. That's called the magnitude of the vector. The magnitude of a force vector is the strength. Magnitude of velocity is the speed, right? Uh, so the amount or the strength or the magnitude of the force. And then, of course, it's got a direction. I can't push in without having a direction. I can talk about strength without having direction. But the force has a direction. The strength is going to be in newtons or pounds, generally, where one newton, capital N, is about a quarter pound. Remember that. People say 10 newtons. You know, what does that mean? Oh, it's about a quarter of a pound, you know times 10, so 10 quarters of a pound. A Newton's like, you know, you might think, I would guess, if someone just asked me, and I didn't know, what's stronger, a Newton force or a pound force? It sounds like Newton's kind of impressive, but Newton's really less, right? So go out and get yourself a cheeseburger and order a one Newton burger instead of a quarter pound burger, and you, you'll be in, in shape there. So there's forces, right? So here's some forces. Um, the table, has to push up or this will fall. So the table's pushing up. I can really see the table pushes up. Whoa. Oh, there's a stretchy little board there. That's called a normal force. If I tilt it, it supports it this way. In fact, now the normal force from this board on this object is down. So it can be a variety of ways. Right? There's the normal force. There's the roughness of surfaces or friction and less friction. Okay, so surfaces exert this kind of force, friction, and normal, and we'll explore that and see how they're related. And there's some tricky stuff in there. Uh, there's the, there's magnet force, right? That's, that's pretty cool. Magnets, magnets are really cool. Oops. Uh, and we'll explore that in another one. Did my, did it, did it die? Is it still going? 
Okay, and then there's the electric force. Uh, so there's lots of things. And of course, there's the gravity force, which is all these are gravity magnet. Those are weird. How does that, how does that pull without touching? We call those long range force action at a distance forces. They're very deep. Electric force, magnetic force, gravity force. They're very strange. There's also the nuclear strong force and nuclear weak force. Five. There are some connections. We'll explore those. Otherwise, we look for things touching it. Strings. I can't push very well with a string, but I can sure pull. So the string force is along the string. Pull harder, there's more force. That's called tension. Okay, so there's a variety of forces. One more ingredient and we're good to go. Then we'll work it and go back to these definitions, because when you come back, you'll see it again a little more deeply. Mass. Mass, one of, the, one of the most poorly defined things often in a class or in a book. Let's define it right. It is what it is. Okay? It's a, an experimental result. It's something that we get. And we put it into equations. We can calculate it. But you get it by measuring it. Right? You don't count things. So what is mass not? It's not the amount of things. Look, I've got two of these guys and one of these guys. And yet, you probably know, then this has got to have more mass. And yet, I have two. Well, it's not the amount of things. Well, you might say, oh, it's the amount of matter. Well, OK, let's say I have two protons and two protons. But these two protons are bound in the nucleus. Well, actually, and these two are free. They have different mass. So it's not the amount of